Oh, fish on. Fish on, boys. Fish on. Right up against the shore. Look how gorgeous that brook trout is. Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish. Fish on. I told you guys, man. Did you guys see that? Would you just take a look at this? It's so beautiful. Super excited to be out here as well. But before I hop onto my little boat here, just gonna briefly introduce you guys to what we're doing today. Today we're up in the mountains, as you can see behind me. We're just out here at another good old mountain lake. From what I have researched, this is a multi-species lake. So there's bass, crappie, trout, perch, stuff like that, multi-species. And so, um, had a hike down here from my car this is another hike in only lake and so brought all my stuff again with me and right now i'm gonna hop on my boat and gonna make sure my rods and reels are ready to go with that being said no more delays let's get to fishing let's push us out of the shallow stuff here. Here we go, folks. Got to make sure my oars are in. So it's kind of windy. So let me go park and I'll show you guys what I'm thinking today. So since we are at a multi-species lake and there's panfish and there's bass, and we're fishing a brand new lake that I have no idea how to fish, I decided to bring three rods today. So today I've got two baitcaster rods. Both of these are the Okuma TCS rods. One is a seven foot three inch rod, heavy fast action rod. The other one is a seven feet heavy fast action rod. So on the longer rod, which is on my left hand, I've got the Abu Garcia Revo STX reel with 15 pound red label fluorocarbon by Seaguar. And then on here, I've got a little swim jig. This is a dirty jig swim jig. I believe it's the 5 16 ounce and then i've got the strike king rage menace um trailer hooked onto there this is the i believe it's like the gizzard shad color or something like that or no the smoky shad color so that's what this little trailer is and then on my other bait caster you guys already know just a simple wacky rig this is a 3 aught ewg hook by gamakatsu and then i've just got a june bug worm wacky rigged onto there just basically hook the worm right in the middle and then for my reel on this rod i have the lose uh, tournament mb and this reel right here is also spooled up with 15 pound fluorocarbon red label by seaguar so that's my bass stuff and then for my panfish stuff, I've just got this ugly stick elite rod. This is the five foot ultralight. And then I've got a Shimano Sienna 500 reel on here, four pound monofilament. And then I just have a little 
one thirty second ounce chartreuse jig head with the notorious custom jig on there. And as always, my go-to method when I'm trying to figure out a new lake, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook a little bobber onto here. That way when my boat is floating around, my jig is also being drug along by this bobber. And so, I don't know, that seems like too long of a leader. Let's shorten it because it's pretty weedy here. So I don't want my jig to just go and sink to the weeds. Let's readjust this really quick. So I'm thinking about a two feet leader or something like that. All right. Oh, there's a fish that just jumped right there. Do you guys see that? All right, let's just cast our bobber out there. You guys see this log that's falling in the water? Come on, man. There's gotta be something in here. fish that's a fish fish on I told you guys man did you guys see that oh that's a largey what I'd say guys what I say there we go got him on the notorious custom jig right here that is our first official fish at this brand new lake. He's not very big, but that's a large mouth, so I'll take it. I was getting ready to throw my wacky rig out. I looked back and my bobber was just gone. Well, you guys look right here. It looks like there's a bunch of beds, but it looks just like old beds, meaning the fish have already spawned, but these open spots right here, it seems like a fish fanned out some spots for the eggs not gonna lie to you guys i'm i'm struggling quite a bit right now just trying to catch a fish i mean i caught that large mouth under that lay down right there but yeah i've been like targeting something that looks fishy like lily pads like that just like those lone patches of lily pad and just nothing and so this lake does go out to like 30 feet deep so i'm wondering if the fish have just moved out deep and they're not shallow because i'm literally against the shoreline right now and so right now I'm just kind of thinking of like, where can these fish be? What can they be doing? Or am I just not throwing the right color? Am I just not throwing the right, the right lure? Like what can these fish want? That's literally racing through my head right now. But if you're fishing a brand new lake, these are just things that you're gonna encounter on a regular basis. You know, you're gonna not really know what to fish. So you gotta really grind it out and see what the fish want. All right, so this was what, I caught that little large mouth off of. But the thing with using this and a bobber is it, it takes too long to cover water. And so right now, this is just uh, my little rooster tail and panther martin box. I also have a lipless crankbait in here just in case, like, I don't know, I wanna throw it on my bait caster or something. But if you guys watched my last mountain lake video where I caught that giant cutthroat, this is the lure I was using. This is a one sixth ounce uh, rooster tail and the color for this one is called glitter black one sixth ounce it's got a gold blade on it and it has three hooks also known as a treble hook so that's what we're going to throw on to our little ultralight and we'll see if we can catch a trout all right so there we have it we got our ugly stick elite rod again our little shimano sienna reel and we don't have any lead or anything because our main line is already pretty small, four pound mono. So we just tied it straight to our rooster tail. And since there is not that much weed in the open water parts, we're just gonna cast this out. Cast pretty far, if, if you ask me. 
just gonna cast this out and we're just gonna start retrieving it. Oh, fish on. We got a fish, guys. Very tiny. Well, what is that? Is that a bass? Oh, that's a trout. That's a trout. Oh, we got him. Oh. Dude, he was so small. He was so small that my, my rooster tail popped out and he fell through one of these holes. That was a brook trout. That was, no, that was not a brook trout. That was a cutthroat. <laughs> we technically landed him. He was just so small that he fell through the net. So the thing is, this lake is not that big. So I've actually already paddled all the way around and we're back to that tree where I first caught that largemouth this morning. What I have noticed is that Anytime I'm fishing where there's lily pads or weeds or grass, there's like no fish there. As soon as I switch over to a mud bottom or a hard bottom or some kind of hard structure like this tree right here, like I'm catching fish. So granted, you know, the fishing hasn't been all too great. Fishing has been pretty poor in my opinion. But I mean, for a brand new lake that I've never really fished before, you can't really complain. So right now it's just one of those things where i'm just like not even really targeting anything because i've already targeted so much things that right now it's just i don't know i don't know what theory to test out next besides maybe go out to the middle of the lake and fish deep maybe that's an option maybe that's where all the fish are because definitely there's not a lot of fish up in the shallows it's just gorgeous right now but I don't know how the sun affects these mountain fish, you know? Like, do they become more active when the sun's out or do they get even lazier with the sun, you know? I don't fish mountain lakes enough to really know how little weather stuff like this affects them. Oh, fish on. Fish on, boys. Fish on right up against the shore not very big but i will take it i don't want to horse him in but he's tiny it's another trout looking at this guy get in the net we got him boys we got him oh that is a brook trout that's a brookie boys that's a brook trout. So whenever you're handling trout, whether it's wild or domestic, if you don't want to keep them or you're on the fence of whether you're going to keep them or release them, always wet your hands. Always wet your hands because if you don't wet your hands, your dry hands will actually take that slime off of their body, which is very crucial for their survival. Dude, let me turn you guys around so that you guys can see the, the colors of this fish. Look how gorgeous that brook trout is. Gorgeous. All right, we're gonna unhook them and we're gonna release this one. We're gonna unhook them in the water. Oh, he came off. Perfect. He unhooked himself. Look, he's like stuck. All right. Um. All right, buddy, how the, how the heck did you get stuck in there? Oh, so his fin got through the net, but then I don't want to pull it back because if I, if I pull him backwards, then he's going to break his top fin, but I guess we'll just kind of, oh my gosh, he's in a, he's not in a very good spot right now. Oh, there he goes. I just pushed him through. <laughs> I just pushed him through the net and he, he went.
that's awesome man i literally just cast it right onto the shore right there and he was just on that was a brook trout i guess the other one that we caught earlier was also a brook trout because it was the same exact color like that it's just that it happened so fast that i didn't get a good look at him so i just thought it was a cutthroat but it's actually a brook trout i don't like saying this but the lake has defeated me today just could not figure out what the fish in this lake want but i fished for as long as i could today i'm uh, gonna cook me up a good lunch and then i gotta head back home so it's all the fishing we could do today i guess it's not too bad considering we didn't get skunked but with how much effort i put in for today i feel like we should have caught a little bit more fish than just three little dinky fish but hey new lake no skunk i'll take it so gonna land here looks like a good spot to camp not camp but cook so Woo! Been sitting all day. Feels good to finally be able to stretch again. So since I'm still gonna be cooking lunch for me, uh, I'm still gonna be here for however long it takes for me to cook and eat. So since I already have this ultralight retied to a little pink and yellow jig, I'm just gonna cast this thing out here and see if there's a fish that wants to come and eat it. So I'll just put this here, put it on top of my boat, and then let's just try to organize, try to organize some stuff. Let's put my oars here, my life jacket and my sweater. Let's put it right here. Got two rods. My bass fishing rods put those here my air pump and then just got other little things like this just put it here for now that way I don't step on it and just other stuff so today I was really planning on catching a fish and cooking it alongside my fried rice but as you saw we came up short today i mean we could have kept literally any of those fish that we've caught today but they were just a little bit on the smaller side but right now i'm just going to cook up some fried rice using some venison from the deer i shot last year so that being said let's get to cooking First time testing out this MSR burner right here. So I was trying to test this limit to see if it can cook with this. I think we'll make it work. Show you guys what we got. Just got some cold rice, obviously, because we're going to be cooking fried rice. Venison marinated and good stuff. We got a green onion in here and we got yellow onion. And then got some soy sauce. And then two eggs. And this is pretty much everything I'm gonna to need to cook me up a good lunch. Oh, and then just some oil.
So next time, I'm just gonna bring a smaller pan because this thing burns really fast, but it's only burning in the middle. It's not evenly distributed, but we'll work around it. There it is. It's not the most eye appetizing, but that's because I was hoping for a piece of fish to go on top of this bowl right here. But today we came up short, so this is all we're eating. It's still gonna be delicious because there's wild game in it. So, but I can't lie, man. Even though we don't have a fish to cook up right now, the best thing I can eat right now is just this view. Just being right next to a lake in beautiful country like this, eating a good meal, what more can you ask for, you know? It's just um, some venison marinated in a lot of stuff that I, I was testing out. Some eggs, onions, green onions, rice, soy sauce, and then I would have really loved it if I had sriracha over this, but we'll eat what we have, so. I am just getting eaten alive by mosquitoes right now. 